सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली In today's India, the only thing worse than being wrong for a political columnist is to be right, and I say this with sadness. I wrote a month ago about the wrestlers who were protesting at Jantar Mantar. They had demanded action against the chief of the wrestling body, a man called Bridge Bhushan Singh. They had said they had been sexually molested, harassed by this man, and they asked for some kind of action. The Delhi police refused any kind of action. They then had to go to the Supreme Court, which forced the police to file an FIR. And of course, because the police were never keen on the idea, the investigation is ongoing and nothing has happened. People said then that something would happen because the protests were so great and the government would be forced to act. And I wrote a month ago that I didn't think the government would do anything. and i explained why i thought the government wouldn't do anything i said that it's part of mr modi's personality not to give in to agitations some people got the impression that i approved of this aspect of his personality no it was a simple matter of fact mr modi believes that when people protest he doesn't give in he does what he wants to and he does it at a time of his own choosing so the obvious question you have people who won medals for india young women complaining bitterly about a man who's a member of the ruling party and who is let's face it not a very savory character he is no stranger to the criminal courts he's faced murder charges why would mr modi everyone asked ignore these wrestlers and not do something about the man they were complaining about he didn't have to jail him or anything he could have initially at least asked for him to step aside said there would be an inquiry at the end of the inquiry they would decide what happened he didn't do any such thing people said no no he's bound to do something his slogan is beti bachao and i said well the thing is the way things are going now it's become beti ko hamare se bachao that's how the government is behaving and though people didn't agree with me it's been a month nothing has happened the wrestlers are still protesting mr modi in that month has traveled the world has met various foreign leaders who apparently according to his chaps have told him what a wonderful guy he is he's embraced the singhal he's done a ritual for the opening of parliament and he has pretended that the wrestlers don't exist when the wrestlers did attempt to attract attention again his police force assaulted them and you've seen those terrible visuals now i am going to argue that while it is mr modi's personality never to give in as we've seen over the last month there are situations where he does surrender if not surrender at least listen to the other point of view the farm laws is one exception the anti caa agitation is another example in both these cases mr modi did not change his mind did not go back on a policy because he believed he was wrong he did it because of political expediency he believed that with the up elections coming the farm laws were a problem he believed that the ca agitation threatened to get out of hands so i'm going to argue this week that something similar is happening in the case of the wrestlers it's probably time for mr modi to back off and to change his mind not because he wants to bachao our betis not because he feels bad for the wrestlers not because he's embarrassed about backing a tug against people who are complaining of harassment not because he cares about global media i mean the ioc has made complaints about it the body that regulates world wrestling has said it is very concerned not because of any of those reasons but because i think it is now politically expedient for mr modi to back down it's going to be like the caa or the farm laws a u turn not because he believes in anybody's guilt or innocence but only because he believes in his own vision let me explain 
there have always been three strings to Mr. Modi's bow. Number one is Hindutva, which of course is what many of his followers venerate and believe in. The second is welfareism, which he may have inherited from the Manmohan Singh government, but which he's turned into a fine art. And the third is the support of the middle class. The middle class has been sold on Mr. Modi. It believes in his sincerity. It sees him as a decent chap who's out to do his best. It will vote for him again and again because it doesn't think much of the alternatives. Also, Mr. Modi believes. Now, here's my view. I think Mr. Modi may be making a mistake in taking the middle class so much for granted. We forget that the middle class is the most fickle class in India. These are the people who sang along to India shining and then quickly abandoned L.K. Advani. They abandoned Atal Bihari Vajpayee, who they regarded as the greatest prime minister in Indian history, and embraced Manmohan Singh. It's the same people who turned viciously against Manmohan Singh and then looked up to Mr. Modi. So it's always a mistake to take them for granted. And yet, that's pretty much what the government has done over the last few months. Forget about the restless for a minute. Look at other things. Look at that idiotic crackpot scheme invented by the finance ministry to charge a 20% tax on overseas credit card transactions. Nobody there, I mean, obviously composed of geniuses that ministry, realized how unpopular this was going to be. When the middle class, because they're the people affected by this, complained, they announced some small exception. And then they said, well, it doesn't matter because we give an exception. The poor of India will not suffer. Or take the fuss over the 2000 rupee note. First of all, it should never have been introduced if the idea was to discourage black money. But that's another matter. When they announced they were withdrawing it, they didn't make it clear whether they were really withdrawing it because they said, you can keep it till September 30th. Nobody used it till then. Then they said you can exchange it at a bank. Then they said, but you have to fill up a big form before you can do that. Then they said, okay, okay, you don't have to fill up the form. There was just so much confusion. And yet when they were asked questions, they said, oh, the poor don't, don't have 2000 rupee notes. It doesn't affect the poor. You've had this theme running through the government's recent statements, it doesn't affect the poor. Well, of course it doesn't affect the poor. These were not concerns about poverty. These were middle class concerns. But every time you act that because these are middle class concerns and not concerns that affect the poor, they don't matter, you further alienate the middle class. Something like that is happening now with the wrestlers. You see visuals of wrestlers being assaulted. You see pictures of Bridge Bhushan acting like he's king of the world at the inauguration of parliament. Middle class people, m women as well, who look at this are angered, they're outraged. They say this is what the Modi regime was supposed to be about. We voted for Mr. Modi because he was going to fight political thuggery. He was going to protect women. He was going to ensure that something like the Nirbhaya case never happened again. And yet here he is pretending that this is not happening, supporting a man who is an extremely unsavory character only because he's a politician from the ruling party. All of these things will take their toll on Mr. Modi's image. His welfareism, I think, is now yielding limited returns or at least diminishing returns, judging by the Karnataka election. The middle class is poised at a level where it could turn against him if he goes on like this. If he needs to win the next election, and as of now he will, he can't keep ignoring his middle class base. He can't keep ignoring the concerns of decent people. He has to react to them. But for some reason, he isn't. Why? Is it just his ego? Possibly. Or is it that he thinks he has another ace up his sleeve? The parliament opening was essentially an exercise in ritualism. No secular function like the opening of parliament has ever had as many Hindu overtones as this one did. There's still the Ayodhya temple to come. And that's going to be a big show, a show of Hindu revivalism, a show of Hindu triumphalism. Is Mr. Modi hoping that in the months before the election, he can create another Hindutva wave? And because there is such a Hindutva wave, welfareism won't matter, middle class anger will be converted. Well, maybe he is. Maybe that's why he's paying no attention to the middle class. That's why he's paying no attention to abused women. 
And maybe he's right. I mean, he's a very shrewd politician. Maybe the temple will swing it for him. But maybe it won't. There are no sure things in politics. So is it worth taking a risk like this? Is it worth going on and on and sticking to this position just to protect Virid Bhushan Singh? I think at some stage, Mr. Modi is going to have to sit down and figure out what matters most. His image is a strong man who never changes his mind, his ego, or his long-term vision of the future. Isn't he taking unnecessary risks? Isn't he risking the support of the middle class? He doesn't have to care about the protesting wrestlers. I imagine he doesn't. He just has to care about himself. And that should be enough to make him do something.